this is a five waves of energy notes and update now this is from may 16th i've made posts about it but i haven't been able to make a video yet and that's due to dealing with severe weather here on a daily pretty much so let's get started on this jupiter collision at a conference they were showing data that some of the waves of energy that's coming from the binary system will hit jupiter and that there could be debris flying off of jupiter and towards earth now this came from paul begley he was talking about the recent conference he went to and kind of talked about um how they showed this data and when he brought this data to, to Mike from around the world. He agreed with it. However, he didn't agree with the date. He never said it wouldn't happen. He just said that's the data they have so far. That can change. I'll explain that further. The data is showing the estimated date of the Jupiter collision impact as March 28th, 2021. That's also interesting because that happens to be Passover 2021 and Palm Sunday 2021. But the Jupiter impact date could change as more data and observations come in. Scientific observations are ever-changing and estimations and calculations change. That's just how science is. As things get closer, they speed up so it becomes faster and calculations put it closer quicker. So as they get closer, they get faster. That means a lot of calculations are a bit shorter than what we are thinking right now. Those were Mike's words exactly on timing and everything. Okay, so Jupiter balances the gravitational pull of the asteroid belt. If something disturbs Jupiter, it's going to play a big role in the disruption of everything. Jupiter will be hit with these pulses more than once. Now, that part came from Mike. As, as Paul told Mike about, you know, Mike from around the world, as Paul told him about this conference and about that date, he agreed, and that's when he said, you know, data changes. The date could get closer. The date could change. So don't get hung up on that exact date. But then he, he went ahead and said, Jupiter will be hit with these pulses more than once. This will unbalance the gravitational pull in all the central forces. So that would cause planets to shoot out of orbit a bit. Any disruption in the electromagnetism and gravitational pull of Jupiter itself will cause major repercussions. Any disruption in its gravitational pull throws, its, or throws the solar system off balance. Now, we know all that, but we know that Jupiter is the gatekeeper. Without Jupiter, we would be hit by everything, every day, by all the objects coming in. Jupiter is so heavy and massive that it attracts much of what comes into our inner solar system. Most of the junk and debris is being held in place. If there is a shift in Jupiter, it will let go of all the junk and the debris and throw it all over. Also, our orbit won't remain the same. Now, we've talked about Earth's rotation fluctuating also, and I've been thinking maybe that's kind of why the day and night seem kind of different in different places. You know, if, if the rotation and the tilt and wobble, you know, that could be throwing it off. So the video I had posted with, you know, showing daytime when it's supposed to be completely dark, that could be why. Okay, with the sun. We've been watching the sun as it's showing effects from these waves of energy. Something else to watch for with the sun. People are familiar with CMEs and solar flares, but not so much with ring bursts. I've even heard the word solar micronova. Now, when you see these ring bursts take place, that means that there is a specific charge in these cosmic rays and pulses that is coming into our solar system. There is a real big chemical change happening in the sun in reaction to these exotic particles. Remember also the brightness and the sting of how the, hot the sun is. Okay, with Jupiter, these notes that I just read off was broadcasted on May 16th, 2019, and I posted them on May 16th. I want to read something to you that came out from NASA on May 20th, four days after the recording, and these notes in this post. NASA says, Juno finds changes in Jupiter's magnetic field. Now, that's a, that's a big deal. They're talking about all the changes with Jupiter right now. I also want to show a clip from one of the er, or one of my early on videos. This is from June 16th, 2017, talking about this new energy zone which is cosmic radiation energy that is altering the magnetic fields of the planets, pretty much the five ways of energy also. That kind of all goes hand in hand. 
Space Weather also says amateur astronomers are monitoring a strange phenomenon on the verge of Jupiter's great red spot, GRS. The giant storm appears to be unraveling. I haven't seen this before in my 17 or so years of imaging Jupiter, reports a veteran observer Anthony Wesley of Australia, who photographed a streamer of gas detaching itself from the GRS on May 19th. May 19th, three days after the broadcast about changes coming with Jupiter soon. Okay, so also this. May 22nd, space weather update. They say, alert, the great red spot is distorted. He reports that the giant storm is badly distorted. This follows multiple observations by amateur astronomers of streamers of gas peeling off the GRS. It seems the process taking place there, it is increasing significantly, significantly in intensity. I also have a post that I want to note here with these notes. I posted this in 2015 because it had caught my attention. I felt like it was predictive programming. I don't even know why I felt like that, but I just felt that way for some reason. It was on a SpongeBob movie, and it was something about an Illuminati dolphin. But anyways, I really felt it in my gut, so I, when I watched the movie and seen that, I posted it. Now it makes more sense. It almost looks like a pulse of energy hitting Jupiter. It throws debris everywhere. Just something to note. Here is a clip of that Spongebob movie that I'm talking about. Oh, so you're the one keeping the meteors from hitting us. Yes, I am. And I could really do with a party break. Would you mind keeping an eye on things? Sure thing, but uh, what am I keeping my eye on? What are you doing? I'm watching. We don't even know what we're watching for. Maybe we should split up the workload. You watch the one with the big red eye, and I'll watch the one with the ringy thingies. Like a team. Okay, mine's moving. Mine too. No, this doesn't seem right. Should we call Bubbles? Let's give him a minute. He's been holding it for 10,000 years. I'm pretty sure that wasn't supposed to happen. Come on, Plankton. We gotta clean this up before Bubbles gets back. <laughs> oh, much better, yes. You two are free to go. What happened to Saturn and to Jupiter? I'm not even sure why I found that so weird or odd, but back in 2015 when I first seen it, it really caught my attention, so that's why I posted it. Now I feel like it makes more sense with what's going on. The pulses of energy, them hitting the planets, debris, Jupiter, all that. So, kind of just wanted to note that. Might not even be anything, but just wanted to note it anyways. But okay, so... I also, there's one more thing I would like to note. I just want to get this out there. I also want to note that I am not date setting. Mike made it very clear that observations and data changes dates. The date will likely change the closer these certain pulses get. So don't get hung up on that date, please. Just take the data and observations with a grain of salt for now and wait for more data and observations to be made. Also, thanks for everyone or thanks to everyone for the support. I really, really do appreciate it. I've been updating on Patreon when I'm not doing videos, so if you'd like to stay updated, please follow me on the Patreon. I have the link below. Um, it doesn't cost anything for my posts. All my information is out there for free to help you all. If you want to donate a dollar a month or anything like that, that's great, but definitely not a must. Either way, I really do appreciate you all. So thanks, everyone.